You just saw this over the weekend with Disney. Disney just had the historic first, hold on, let me see what the historic, it's the historic first gay teen romance animated film. It's called Strange World. It's the historic first though. I, I thought, wait, hold on, how many, how many times now have I read the headline, historic first gay blank from Disney? I mean, you had Disney executives on leaked video saying that they were pushing a not-so-secret gay agenda. There have been gay kisses in this thing, and gay relationships in this thing, and gay this and gay that. But I guess this, because this one's an underage gay relationship, that's the big new historic first. And it, it totally flopped. The, the, the movie brought in $4.2 million in ticket sales. They're projecting that it could make as little as $21 million over the full uh, holiday weekend. The movie was a $180 million budget. So it's just a complete failure. So why is that? Because the people don't want to see it. Of course not. You can be totally open-minded and live and let live, and you're not homophobic or anything at all. And you don't want to go take your kid to see like cartoon gay teenagers kissing, right? It's just not something that people want. But, but the conservatives don't Unfortunately, the conservatives don't recognize the game that is being played here. And they, they want to allow the, the cultural revolution to, to go halfway. They don't want to totally stand against the cultural revolution, but they don't want it to go all the way either. They want it to, to stop halfway. If you stand in the middle of the road, though, you will, in fact, be hit by a truck. The, the reason that the, the Disney teen gay movie failed is because people don't want to see it. But the reason it was made in the first place is that the entire culture has normalized homosexuality. But the problem is, if you n normalize homosexuality, then you, you have to normalize it for young people too. This is where I actually think that the left makes stronger arguments than the right. If homosexual behavior is totally normal, totally fine, no questions about it whatsoever. Christianity, Judaism, Islam, every, many pagans, everyone who is, though not those Greeks, they got a little frisky with each other. But if, if my, the vast majority of people who have ever thought about these questions were all totally wrong, and there's no moral question whatsoever about homosexual behavior, then, then why shouldn't it be normalized for teenagers too? People develop romantic feelings when they're teenagers. People go on little dates and they have little crushes and they flirt with each other when they're teenagers. So why, why would we now be saying, well, no, you're only allowed to have representations of crushes and dates and teen romances for straight couples, not gay couples? Why would we? That wouldn't make any sense. Unless you were to go all the way and say, no, homosexuality is abnormal and Maybe we'll be open-minded about it, and we're not going to be cruel, and we're not going to be mean, and we're not going to be vicious, and all these different things. But we have to acknowledge it's abnormal. It is not the norm, not what we're aiming at, okay? And therefore, we're not going to present it in our popular culture. We're not going to make every single movie and every single thing gay all the time. And we're certainly not going to present teenage teenagers in these gay relationships in cartoons. But the, I don't think the conservatives are willing to go there. I don't, th do you? No, because it feels icky and, you know, that you'll be called phobic or this or that. And it, it uh, also rubs up against, <laughs> pun unintended, it, it rubs up against a, a liberal premise that, that many American conservatives have adopted, which is that politics is ultimately just about the individual. Individual choice, individual preference, do whatever you want to do as long as it doesn't hurt me, just do whatever you want to do. I have no right to come in and tell you not to do that. The state certainly has no right to come in and tell you not to do that. Uh, you just have a, a sort of radical individual autonomy. Now, that is not traditionally a conservative point of view. That is a liberal point of view, okay? That, that is the consequences of John Locke, okay? The conservatives traditionally tend to go a little more for the Aristotle idea. You know, they tend to go a little bit more for the idea that man is a political being or a social being. We obviously are influenced by one another. There obviously are norms and standards in society, and there always will be. And so we need to just agree on what those are, and hopefully we have better standards and not worse standards, right? I don't, the reason that I think the libs are going to win is not because the libs are omnipotent or the libs are so smart 
or the libs. What, I think the reason that the libs right now are more likely to win on these cultural issues is because the conservatives don't have any clarity on it. And they don't, they don't, they don't see, they don't see how far back on the slippery slope you got to go to stop this sort of stuff because it's a pretty far ways back. And so as a result, this movie is going to bomb and you know what? You're going to get another gay teen cartoon and that one's probably going to bomb too. And you're going to get another gay teen cartoon. It's just going to keep going because the libs are determined to normalize this sort of thing. And the conservatives are not going to resist it. A very, very effective way, as I mentioned, to, to amass power is to claim victimhood. So a lot of this, uh, came out of AIDS when, during the AIDS epidemic, you saw lots of gay guys dying, and this created a lot of public sympathy, rightly so. And uh, as a result of that, you saw a huge leap in the gay, gay rights movement. And then ultimately that leads to redefining marriage, and ultimately that leads to transgenderism. But uh, sometimes, because this is an effective political tactic, sometimes people just fake it. A lot of times people just fake it, actually. So over the last month, there's a gay bar in Hell's Kitchen. It's called VERS, V-E-R-S, VERS. And they've had four separate incidents of an individual throwing bricks through the windows. Awful, terrible, homophobic attack, right? Well, according to a uh, borough president in New York, the epidemic of LGBTQ plus violence is national. A well-known gay bar on Manhattan's west side has been attacked repeatedly in recent weeks. We cannot stand for this. According to a city council member, this man, and they show a picture of the guy, this man has thrown bricks at the window of Ver's Bar four times in recent weeks. These are hate crimes against the LGBTQ community, as opposed to love crimes. You know, they're the hate, the hate ones, not the love ones. Please help us identify him. If you have any information, please contact NYPD Hate Crimes at this address or this number. Now, this was going a little too far with the city council member because he showed the picture. There's a little bit of a video. They found the guy. The guy is not being charged with a hate crime. Why is he not being charged with a hate crime? Because he is not a homophobe. How do we know he's not a homophobe? Because he is a gay guy. It was a gay guy doing it. And so now the story goes away. There was that shooting at the gay club in Colorado. The moment the shooting happened, obviously it's very sad whenever a shooting happens, but the moment it happened, you had this flood from the left-wing media. They said, this is a homophobic attack. This is the result of people like those over at the Daily Wire who oppose the LGBTQ agenda. This is, these are people, you have blood on your hands, all you evil conservatives. Then what happened? Turns out the shooter is a member of the LGBTQ community and the shooter identifies as non-binary. And then, and then what happened? The story completely disappeared, completely disappeared, Okay. It was just Jesse Smollett. Jesse, this is a homophobic, anti-black attack in the south side of Chicago, which is MAGA country, and there were white supremacists with nooses. Okay, this isn't totally checking out, but they still push the story. And then when it became clear he made the whole thing up, the story just went away. And it's important for people to recognize this. When you're reading the news, you, you have to recognize that, yes, the stories are probably not being reported accurately. So yes, they spread fake news in that way. But it goes even further. The only reason you are seeing certain stories is to push an agenda. Newspapers have editors, okay? The reason that these stories end up there in the first place, the reason you've heard of these stories is because they're pushing an agenda. You see this in every news story. Forget about the gay stuff or the race stuff or whatever. You see this with the war in Ukraine. Why is it that the war in Ukraine is the only war that anyone's really heard about in recent years? It's not because it's the only war going on. There are plenty of wars going on in Arabia, in Africa, in Asia. There are wars going on all over the place. You're hearing about that war because it more directly involves the United States, even though the U.S. doesn't want to admit it. And two, because the, the West feels a, 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 an interest, the United States feels a national interest in that war. And so you're seeing a ton of it. That's, that is why that is appearing to you. And it's why it's even in your own perception, okay? So it, it helps to be able to see 
through these sorts of things. And, and it, it, when you see shifts in power, that's especially when it becomes clear, because all of the things that, that the side that was in power have been whining on and prattling on about for months and months and years and years, all of a sudden, when they totally back away from them, you realize how hollow their claims were to begin with.